It wasn't much of a place to start a parade, just the dusty scar of a road slicing off Tyler Road into the woods on the southern slope of Shades Mountain. But that's where 26 home builders met back in May to draw for the plots they would build on for the 1965 Parade of Homes. The men's faces revealed their thoughts and plans as they picked numbers of the building lots from the straw hat of a fellow contractor. Some frowned at the insignificant scraps of paper that would become so important in the days ahead. Maybe the lot had the wrong slope for the house they had envisioned, but that's a part of building. Change what you can of the land, turn its faults to assets by molding the house to fit the ground and rocks and trees. Others smiled in quiet satisfaction over drawing the lot they had wanted all along, one that would be a proper showcase for their wares and labor. For in the parade of homes, there could be no deception. The result would be there for all to see, and Birmingham would come to see and compare the finished products. But that day was still far off as the builders marked the subdivision map, shook hands, and prepared for the work ahead. Within a few weeks, the main road had pierced deeper into the woods and sprouted side streets along the slopes. The pace remained casual, though, and the dirt road was still a playground for a wandering boy and his dog to explore. In mid-June, the serious work began. Axes rang and bulldozers rumbled, their blades grating against the sandstone that lies just beneath the red clay. In the early days of summer, it was too dry and workmen gobbled dust as they cut the road and sank squared holes for foundations. Then the rain set in and turned the road to a greasy muck that mired up trucks and pulled at the boots of the workmen. A ditch gashed open the road. Workmen scrambled in and out, lining up the pipes, mortaring tight the joints. Behind came the bulldozer closing the earth again over the water main. The line stretched off down Shades Mountain to make the connection that would bring water to the new homes. Together, the pipelines and unfinished streets teemed to give the neighborhood a look of permanence. At some home sites, the bed of sandstone that makes up the spine of Shades Mountain held up progress. Blasting teams came in and the chatter of steam drills rang through the woods. Behind the driller, the powder man worked gingerly, dropping the charges into the rock and tamping them down. When the plunger sparked off the charge, heavy rope mats held down the flying rock and muffled the explosion. In only a day, the crew sinks a gaping five-foot hole, and work can begin on another basement. The houses, as July approached, were still marked only by the bare promise of string stretched taut to hold the basement diggers true. But the work went on, and the thoughtful visitor was impressed with how little the process of raising a home has changed in the days since pioneers first cleared the land and built their cabins. Bulldozers have replaced mule teams, planks are smooth and slick without the hewing marks of the hand craftsmen, but the ring of axes and the thud of picks in reluctant earth abide. Some things automation will not replace in this craft, the sharp square edges of a well-dug ditch, the quiet coordination of men working together, one breaking loose the clay, the other scooping it clear. Unchanged, too, is the joy of building, of seeing the rough woods transformed into a bustling neighborhood. It shows in the face of the foreman who pauses to wipe sweat from his eyes and survey the house growing before him. There's a satisfaction in building unknown in other trades. Perhaps it springs from transforming the scribblings of a blueprint into wood and brick, or from the blending sounds of hammer and saw. Part of it, too, is the easy comradeship of the crew relaxing at lunchtime. Probably it's all of these things, plus the knowledge at the end of the day that the proof of a man's work is there for all to see and will endure. So in late June, the parade of homes was three months away from the smacking brightness of new paint and the glisten of porcelain, but the parade was well begun.
Midsummer was cooler than usual this year. The weather held good and the houses mushroomed up. The bare bones of foundation and framing fleshed out into recognizable dwellings. Skins of siding and brick veneer imparted a touch of personality to each house, and early visitors began picking their favorites. To the untrained eye, it might have appeared that the houses were complete, save for the addition of a few shrubs and some grass but much of the hardest and most delicate work lay ahead. No detail escaped notice. The parade of homes involves a total concept of quality living. Such items as correctly laid out and poured sidewalks receive close attention, for the future homeowner will have to live with everything on his lot. Landscapers also stayed busy at the heels of construction workers, for builders feel it's useless to take pains over a beautiful home and then set it in a pile of bare rocks and crabgrass. And by late August, the planning that goes into the parade of homes was plainly bearing fruit. The houses fit beautifully into the rolling terrain of Shades Mountain, and here was a project in which the consumer was the chief concern not just a target to be nailed on opening day. It seems that some developers consider trees a minor nuisance to be bulldozed out of the way, but parade builders preserve as much of the natural setting as possible. No one will have to spend thousands of dollars and wait years for a shady wooded lot. It comes with the house. The streets follow the contours of the land. They're broad and safe and offer good visibility something for young families with active kids to consider. The buyers of parade homes will not soon be faced with repair and maintenance bills either. For instance, this new siding looks and cuts like wood, but has the weather-resistant qualities of brick. The siding is a fire-resistant combination of wood, asbestos, and cement. The parade of homes will have many such advances to offer this year. The homes will include some of the newest appliances and most advanced materials. Among the innovations are vinyl flooring that never needs waxing, exterior siding that requires no painting, indoor barbecue grills, ovens with snap-out liners, combination dishwasher garbage disposals. All of this plus styling that will not be dated in a few years. Many new neighborhoods look as if the houses were all stamped out of the same mold and plopped down on tiny lots. The only difference in such houses is the placement of the front door or carport. And the only way to find your way home is to memorize the address. Not so with parade homes. Birmingham Association builders feel that each home should reflect something unique, something to set it apart from other houses. People have widely different tastes in design, but there is something here for everyone, and each is one that a family can point out with pride as our home. Builders have made excellent use of materials, both new and traditional. Many of the houses show a skillful blend of rustic woods and old brick. All are designed for easy, low-cost upkeep, and each has some distinctive touch. The selection ranges from sleek, low-contemporary to traditional southern colonial styling. The chalet and English country home looks are in evidence in many roof lines and window arrangements. All of these things, style, convenience, economy, are important, but there's an even bigger extra for the 1965 Parade of Homes. As one builder pointed out, at most home shows, about the only change from last year's model is a gold faucet in the bathroom or a new tile pattern. But Birmingham is in luck this year. The 1965 Parade of Homes marks the first showing in this area of quiet homes. You may have read of the quiet home concept in national magazines. It's an exciting new idea in quality living. And Birmingham has been selected as one of the pilot sites for market testing quiet homes. The prospective buyer will see a totally new product. Comparing the quiet home to yesterday's house is like comparing the roar of city traffic to the murmur of a stream. We work in noise all day, builders have reasoned. Why take it home with us? The quiet home conquers household noise, that shatterer of nerves and wrecker of domestic tranquility. Each room can be a quiet, restful, private unit, while the television blares in one room and the kids romp in another. In short, there's room for everyone in a quiet home, and here's how it works. 
A special cutaway shows the construction of a quiet home wall. In this picture, you can see the studs are offset to cut down transfer of vibrations. Special sound conditioning board is placed over the studs and half inch gypsum board is glued to the sound board. Electrical outlets receive a lot of attention. Each one is caulked and sealed to prevent sound leaks. Since back to back electrical outlets act like a 15 square inch hole in the wall, fixtures are staggered at least one stud apart. Researchers have discovered that medicine cabinets are also a special offender in many homes since they penetrate deep into the wall. The cavity for this built-in sound amplifier is lined with sound deadening material in quiet home construction. Doors, of course, constitute the major sound link between rooms to minimize noise transmission, doors are of solid core construction with perimeter gaskets or tight-fitting thresholds. Upstairs floors have sound insulating subflooring. Further noise is achieved by putting cushioning material between major plumbing connections where they fasten to the house and make for further noise reduction. Some builders even take pains to use a pipe of a larger than normal diameter to reduce water pressure noise. Here workmen at Parade Village are installing sound conditioning board before surfacing it with gypsum wall board. This sound conditioning board, in addition to its sound proofing qualities, has the advantage of offering excellent heat insulation, increasing the efficiency and economy of the year round air conditioning. These 4x8 panels also provide a firm, even foundation for the gypsum board, overcoming the problems of bucking and cracking, which went along with wet plaster application. At this stage of the construction, the electrical outlets are positioned so that no two are directly opposite each other. In some cases, construction problems may prohibit staggering of the outlets, in which case sound matting must be placed between the back-to-back -back outlets. All of these matters must be attended to before the wall board is up. There are definite rules for sound conditioning, and cheating on the details at this stage could throw the whole quiet home effort out of kilter. Finally, attention to details such as caulking will guarantee that loud speech is hardly audible in the next room. Speech in a normal tone cannot be heard at all. After the sound conditioning board is satisfactorily installed with all outlets correctly placed and sealed, measuring for the final layer of gypsum wall board begins. The process of applying the gypsum board has been changed considerably for quiet home construction and installation has become so streamlined that painters can move in only a day or two after the wall men. The wall board is cut to fit and then coated with a strong gluing compound. The glue will bond firmly to the surface of the sound conditioning board. Formerly, nails were driven into the gypsum panels, then putty was applied over the hammer marks. In the quiet home, nails are driven only about halfway in and pulled out after the glue hardens. They hold the board in place only long enough for the gluing agent to take over. There is a reason for this. Research has shown that a nail left in the gypsum board will conduct sound vibrations through the wall. This is the kind of careful planning that makes a quiet home a real bargain. Such work is tedious, yet one trip to a quiet home will convince you that it's worth all the trouble. This method of wallboard installation makes for a smoother, more attractive interior wall, and it's a proven way of guaranteeing the privacy of each room. The National Association of Home Builders, the National Housing Center, and related organizations have spent a great deal of time, effort, and money to discover exactly what materials and what techniques produce the quiet, possible home with a minimum of expense to the home buyer. This is a new device that has greatly speeded the sealing of cracks between wallboard panels. In the past, this was done by hand, taking a great deal more time. Advances such as this have brought great changes in the building industry during the last 10 years, 
The result is a savings in labor costs which have held value per dollar relatively consistent while prices have gone much higher in other fields. This is the final step before painting the gypsum wall board. The sealing of nail holes and cracks can be accomplished in a very short time now, allowing the painters to move in the next day. After the tape is applied, a quick touch up with putty and trowel and the wall is in its finished form. These new homes will be as soundproof as building technology can make them, even down to the caulking of the electrical outlets. The families that are lucky and wise enough to move into these quiet homes will be getting their money's worth and much more. Sound conditioning is the major breakthrough in home construction in recent years, and Birmingham builders are leading the way. Acoustical ceilings are nothing new, but many parade homes feature a ceiling material entirely new in its beauty, durability, and sound insulating qualities. Here's a sample cut from one of the panels showing a two inch layer of fiberglass topped with a vinyl covering which requires no painting. So new is this prefabricated ceiling that contractors brought in manufacturer's representatives to teach work crews how to install the sound conditioner. It comes in large panels which are cut to fit the dimensions of the room. Then steel runners provide center support. Around the walls, the panels rest on standard wood molding. And the manufacturers have designed a special plastic tool for tucking in the edges of the vinyl covering to provide a straight, neat seam. The result? A ceiling that has everything, beauty, durability, permanent paint, and excellent sound deadening characteristics. The vinyl will take regular paints should the homeowner desire a change in color. By the way, the hardest people to sell on any new material are the craftsmen who build houses for a living, and they're sold on this. After only a few hours, carpenters who had never worked with the fiberglass panels were able to install a ceiling in a fraction of the time required for standard gypsum board. Comfort is important, but there are other reasons for investing in a quiet home. Scientists have shown that the constant bombardment of noise in the modern city actually makes us edgy, tired, and irritable. A quietized house is intended to provide a buffer against the constant stream of noise that we must endure most of the day. Keep in mind as we look at the homes that these pictures were taken a few days before the houses were completed. The Greenview Relay House is a colonial split level with four bedrooms and two baths on the upper level. This house is ideal for the active family that needs plenty of room. The tiled entrance foyer opens into a roomy den and the joining sun deck. The den is complete with log burning fireplace. The aristocrat, a quiet home, is a comfortable southern colonial house featuring wall-to-wall -wall carpeting and acoustical ceilings throughout. Another four-bedroom home for the large family, Ladue Manor offers a roomy den with fireplace and an elevated sun deck. Like many of the homes in this year's parade, it has central air conditioning. Gracious double doors front an entrance hall with luxurious gold pattern wall covering. The den features unique ship deck flooring, and there's a fireplace and in the Ledoux Manor home, you'll also see built-in desk, along with companion bookshelves. Distinctive styling and a beautiful mountain view mark the mountaineer as a sure crowd pleaser. This house is loaded with features, including a labor-saving kitchen. Beautifully finished cabinets and the latest appliances keynote this kitchen. 
The Mountaineer in the 65 Parade features one of the most unusual and skillfully constructed fireplaces that you'll see in this parade or in any parade of home. Room and luxury were the aims of the builders of the Crestview home. This beautiful home has four bedrooms. Three of the bedrooms plus the living and dining rooms are completely carpeted and the basement houses a spacious two-car garage. Here's the home for the style-conscious individualist. From the landscaped entranceway all the way through the color-coordinated kitchen, Villa Serena is the interior decorator's dream house. The Villa Serena is carpeted throughout the living, dining, and bedroom areas. The living room has built-in color-coordinated cabinets and bookshelves. The rustic English styling of the Diane speaks for itself. Focal point of the interior is the paneled den with log burning fireplace and exposed beams. The Diane has four bedrooms. You'll find two up to the minute baths as well as carpeted living and dining rooms. As the name implies, Whisper Home is a quiet home making use of a wide range of sound deadening devices. Sound conditioning board, insulated air and ventilation ducts, and quiet appliances mark the whisper as an exemplary quiet home. It was built in rigid compliance with the scientific principles of quiet home construction. Another quiet home, the Monticello, is of classic colonial two-story design. The four bedrooms are carpeted and convenient to the two and one-half baths. The living room and dining room are a showcase of colonial decor. In the rear, an expansive redwood sun deck offers private outdoor living. The Green View is a tri-level home containing four bedrooms, the master bedroom adjoining a private bath. Downstairs, a roomy playroom opens off the paneled den with the fireplace. A unique extra in this house is the intercom, which doubles as an AM-FM radio with speakers in each room. The Southern Air is a colonial brick with many features for livability. The living and dining room have nylon carpets for easy maintenance and lasting beauty. One of the two upstairs baths closes off from the hall to form a powder room. The exterior brick is carried indoors with a beautiful and spacious fireplace. The foyer of the Southern Air features a durable, lustrous tile in marble pattern. With an exterior of cedar and old brick, the greenwood fits beautifully into its mountain setting. Another engineered quiet home, the greenwood features both upstairs den and basement teen room. Shoppers will like the floor plan, which is designed for smooth traffic flow while leaving the bedroom areas in complete privacy. Here's the Tanglewood, a comfortable home designed with the large family in mind. The first floor of this attractive split level has an airy foyer, which opens onto carpeted living and dining rooms. Ladies will like the functional kitchen as well as the laundry room and extra bedroom and bath on the lower level. This is the nerve center of the Parade of Homes, the office of the Birmingham Association of Home Builders located at 612 37th Street South. This modern office houses a full-time staff that keeps its member firms up on the latest trends in the building industry. 
The membership is composed of all types of individuals and companies that are involved in the design, building, and financing of the home. Mrs. William A. Acton is the association's secretary bookkeeper. Here she's busy mailing out the brochures prepared for the 1965 parade. Executive Vice President George Perkins stays busy keeping tabs on advances in building research, advances that affect local builders. Overseeing the operation this year is the 65 Association President, Lester C. Wyatt. While visiting the Home Builders Association, we talked with Vondel Gravely, a key figure in the parade of homes. Ronald Gravely, as a past president of the Birmingham Association of Home Builders, I know you have uh, worked very hard about this time of year on the parades of homes, but this year you have a, a special interest, is that right? Yes, Harry, I'm chairman of the board of the trustees of the National Housing Center in Washington, and it was in the housing center that we developed the White House concept. We're using Birmingham as a pilot city. Let's talk just a little bit about this uh, quiet house concept. Uh, is this something that, uh, well, maybe you thought up, or is it something that uh, is a pretty big program that's getting national attention? This is a large program, for, and it will be getting national attention. In fact, uh, about a year ago, we started uh, this program through our National uh, Association of Home Builders Research Laboratory. They set the standards for a quiet home that would reduce the noise, the transmission of noise from one room to another, and to cut down on the outside noise coming into the house. This year, we will have representatives from 41 home building manufacturers throughout the country in attendance for this parade. Also, we will have home builders from all over the nation that will be coming to Birmingham to see the pilot parade of homes using the White House concept. It is expected that this will be used nationwide next year in homes. Well, in this uh, program, we've attempted to show some of the advantages of the quiet home, but what about people visiting the parade? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the demonstration house out there? The demonstration house, Harry, is a house divided into two uh, large rooms. One room is, let's say, conventionally built using the the products, the appliances that we would normally put into a house. The adjoining room is built with all the white house or sound condition techniques and materials. You think this will uh, demonstrate very graphically uh, to the folks who come to see the Parade of Homes uh, exactly the advantages you're building in, right? Yes, Harry, it will because you will walk from the conventional built room right through a door into the quiet room. I see, and this is going to make uh, the nerves last a lot longer and tempers uh, flare a lot less often, I'm sure. Bondle, let me get you to tell us uh, how to get there. I've made several trips out, but there may be some folks who'd like to have a few directions. We believe that we have made it easier this year, Harry. We have provided a parking lot at the intersection of US 31 and Green Springs or Columbiana Road. Uh, from there, you can take a shuttle bus right to the parade entrance. Very good. Well, I look forward to seeing you out there. I know uh, we have just about a week to go, and there are a few more things to be done, but uh, they always manage to make the deadline, and I know this year you and uh, everyone connected with the parade will be very proud of the 1965 Parade of Homes. Any final word you'd like to add? We just want to say to everyone, Y'all come. We want, we're looking forward to the opportunity of showing you this year's Parade of Homes. <laughs>